Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we're on a brand new decking project. So check this out. I hope you like what you see. Get a good idea of what we're going against and that kind of thing. Thank you for watching. Please click that subscribe button uh, if you haven't already and like our videos. All right, so basically what we're doing is we're in a backyard. We're tearing the existing deck apart right now. We got Nazi and Dustin up there uh, pulling up some old Trex composite decking and uh it's going away we're gonna install some new azec decking and basically this is a permitted job so everything's on the up and up this is a set of construction drawings this is just one of the five that i submit with my proposal and you have to do a plan view when you apply for a building permit you have to show them how you're going to build the deck where you're going to build the deck in relation to the house how you're going to do that uh, the dimensions of the lot, the house, the windows, the doors. You have to show the distances from the deck from the side yards and the backyard. You have to show the structure, the spans, how tall. A lot of stuff has to go into a set of construction drawings and that's why I charge for them. A good set of construction drawings really helps get things pushed through. Sometimes we have them engineered, sometimes we do not. Sometimes I pattern a set of drawings after an engineered set that I've already paid for and sometimes those will go through and sometimes they won't. It depends on the jurisdiction, the plans checker, and uh, who's in charge of, of approving the plan. So these plans have been approved. Uh, you can see there's a stamp from the city of um, University Place is where we're working. And the only modification that they added to my plan was they asked me to put some rebar in our footings because we're not using helical piles on this job. I can't get my machine into this backyard. And we our mobile unit isn't quite 100% active yet. We have a new mobile unit where we can drive helical piles, but we're not going to do it on this project. We're just going to go old school and hand dig and pour concrete and put some rebar in those holes. I think actually what we're gonna do is use this product called Carbon Bar, which is stronger than rebar. It's like a carbon fiber uh, rebar. So uh, we'll get into that later on in the week. In a couple days, uh, maybe we'll show you guys how that works out. So basically, probably the main drawing that would be interesting to you guys is this one, where it's an overhead view of the deck now, it's very small because this deck is large and I have to squeeze it into an eight by 10 or eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. So it shows our beam detail. It shows some V bracing. It shows how our joists are gonna run, all that stuff, okay? So basically, we have to identify where our footings are gonna go. I have different uh, sets of drawings that show the footing locations and how far apart they are from the, the post to post and that kind of thing. But for all intents and purposes for you guys for today, I'm just showing you this overhead one so you can kind of get an idea of what we're building. You can see this side of the deck has a slight curve. It's a 40 foot deck and there's a three foot projection from the end over here, which is 12 feet. If you go to the center, you would come out another three feet. I forget what the radius is of that. I actually have it on my computer and that's how I figured this out and drew it. It's like a huge, just like a hundred and some foot radius, which is a very mild bend, but it was enough to kind of give it a nice look and that's what the client wanted. And then we'll segment, we're putting Regal Ideas Crystal Rail on this deck. So we'll be able to segment those and make them look really nice. This deck is also gonna have a waterproof bladder because the client has this nice fireplace area over here that they've never really used a ton because it's always wet down here and so now it's going to be dry and then we'll have some gutters brought in and then that'll keep things nice and dry for the future that's what we're building uh, any questions about that or construction drawings leave them below in the comments and i'll try to get back to you in a timely fashion i think we're about 985 square feet so it's a good sized deck we're gonna be here a while we'll probably be here six to eight weeks so there should be some really great build updates for you guys during this time and i'm going to try my best to give you good information in these upcoming videos uh, you can always request leave a message and request something from us as well um, if there's something you want to see we have some brick areas so there's going to be a few spots where we're going to be maybe attaching with some brick veneer brackets and that kind of thing so just stay tuned and see what we come up with
Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today, I uh, wanna talk to you a little bit about our progress on our current deck project. All right, so last time you were here, we were doing demolition. So we pretty much have all that done and we have dug our holes and we've had a footing inspection, which is passed. So we were able to pour concrete yesterday. So all that happened yesterday. So we dug our holes We and then uh, a couple days we had to call for a, a footing inspection. And then you have to wait at least 24 hours for them to come out to inspect your holes. That was done. Uh, we poured concrete. So all that's finished. So you can kind of see our brackets are in the ground. And uh, they're all set to different locations, on, just depending on how we need to set our beams. And those are curing real well right now. We could probably start building on them this afternoon if we want to. But we have a lot of house prep to do before we figure out the height of the posts on this deck. So as you can see over here, uh, we have tore away all of the existing floor joists that were coming through the house. All that has to be cut back and cut flush so that we can put a new ledger board up on the house. And we'll kind of get into that uh, later. This is a little bit different deal than what we're used to because there's a lot of different type of blocking since a lot of this deck had framing that that came out from the house and then as different people built they cut things back and they trim things up and everything's done kind of odd and different it's like two different decks on this house one's on the left one's on the right one's at one height one's at a different height so we have to decipher all that which we're getting to so right now we're working on cleaning up the side of the house getting all the siding off getting all of the old floor joists cut flush with the house so that we can figure out how we're gonna attach our ledger boards. So that's what we're up to right now, and that's an update on our progress so far. Alright, so we've run in some complications. Right now uh, we're working around a downdraft and a couple vents and we're trying to figure out what's going on with these walls. There's like uh, some spacers in the wall and then the siding and all that has to come out so that we can have something solid to attach to. You don't ever want to have loose things in between your ledger board and the inside of the house or the belly board of the house or the floor of the house. So. Uh, we're taking care of that. I had to go get some supplies. So we have all the beams here now So we're gonna try to get those unloaded uh, And kind of get them placed and get some posts unloaded so that we can have an area tomorrow and, and, and figure out a couple things tomorrow as far as post elevations and things like that and then we're going to continue to keep working on the side of the house uh, cutting things away and trying to get to solid material so that we can be able to attach our have something solid to attach our ledgers to so that's what we're doing probably for the rest of the day is just house prep Right, so we have our beams off the truck. These are six, six by 12 by 20 foot pressure treated hemlock beams. They don't really come much bigger. They're the heaviest 
most waterlogged pieces of material that you can purchase and we carted them kind of into place but it was just kind of a little bit of a process to get them down here so now that those are down here we also have a manual lift you've probably seen it in some of our other videos we'll probably be using that later in the week to get the beams up but uh, we just wanted to get them kind of in place ready to go we're going to finish unloading the truck and then the rest of the day is going to be strictly working on house prep we'll probably be doing that today and more than likely tomorrow and who knows what however long it takes is however long it takes uh, we're just dealing with a couple things some vents and some downdraft vents and just a bunch of other stuff we're running into so we're just trying to clean up the house and make it righteous and ready so that when we uh, start putting up our ledger boards that everything's nice and flat and stable i think the rest of the day i'm going to be standing up on the scaffolding working on the side of the house Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we are framing away on our current deck project. So the last time you were here, I think we were working on the house, the side of the house, clinging, clinging? cleaning it up, uh, cutting back all the existing exposed joists, waterproofing the side and all that. So since then, we've punched through the concrete, we've dug holes, we've poured concrete, we have all of our posts set up to elevation, our ledger boards are on the house, all our beams are placed, and now we're running joists on the decks. So we have the, we just finished putting up the last couple joists on the lower deck, which you can see right here. And we're finishing up with some joist hangers and that kind of thing. And then we're going to start framing this big boy over here. Uh, this is a little bit larger section. It projects out from the house further and it has a little bit bigger cantilever, but not too much depending on uh, where it's at. So. Follow along and see how we do today, but that's a little bit of an update on where we're at. Just uh, before we lock down any joists to beams, we make sure the posts are plumb. Once you start screwing down joists, you can no longer move the beam back and forth. So we always uh, try to make sure all of our posts are plumb and in, in the right position, make any minor adjustments we need to make before we lock anything down. Because once this is locked down, nothing's gonna move now. That's what I'm doing is taking a minute and making sure that the joist that is over the top of the posts is properly set. And what I did was I actually put a small block on the outside of this joist and then used one of my clamps as a spreader. And I was able to push the beam that way because I physically could not push it by myself to push it into where I needed it to be level. So I just used a clamp and was able to push it in and now I'm locked it down. So now it's not moving and it's exactly where I want it. And now I can continue framing the rest of the beam. I have to do the same check down on the far end, but if you don't, if you don't take the time and do it while you're in construction, we've gone off and I've had guys blam off the entire joist set and the posts were a quarter bubble out. And I'm like, okay, pull all the nails guys pull all the nails and let's do it right. And it teaches them sometimes you have to be taught, you know, what the consequences are when you get ahead of yourself. Now I've personally done it myself as well. I've gone, gotten ahead of the curve and had to go back, pull all the nails out. And I've actually had nail holes showing in my joist because I had to pull the beam that far out. Now the counteract on that is, well, could you put some bracing in to hold it all to a certain level? Yes, you can but we're over concrete on this particular section of the deck and it really wouldn't have worked anyway. So uh, I'm just doing my due diligence to make sure that the posts are plumb. All right, so now we have all the joists are connected to the house. They all have joist hangers and they are all been screwed and secured. So it's, it's now safe to walk on those joists, except for the fact that we don't have them locked down on this side of the beam. Now we graded all of our framing originally where these joists are gonna set out over the beam, we took a level and we chose the thickest board 
all the way to the thinnest board and laid them out but there's still some discrepancies in some of these joists so now we're going to go back and double check over the top of the beam now that i've got the beam locked in place so it's not moving back and forth that it cannot move now we're going to take the rest of the joists get them all on the equal plane level them all out shim them if we have to and then we'll attach those to the top of the beam so that's our next step and then from there we can think about are we going to start blocking bridging or if we're going to start framing the next deck So right now what we're doing is some perimeter uh, rail blocking and some surface border blocking and what we've decided to do is on our perimeter runs on the outside of our deck we're going to add solid blocking all the way through because we know that we have different uh, regal ideas crystal rail pods that have to go in various locations so instead of guessing where those are going to go we're just blocking the entire run with a solid four by six, and then we don't have to guess. Everything will just uh, coincide with what we need when it's time to install it. So we have to run it for the entire run over here, even though we have a landing, because of our bladder system, we can't leave an opening where it might sag and let water collect. So we have to block the whole thing out all the way up to the house, even though we're only gonna use 12 feet of it, or maybe, uh, excuse me, eight feet of the 12 feet uh, we're blocking that extra four feet just to keep it solid. Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I want to give you an update on our current deck build. So I think the last time you guys were here, we were in the middle of framing the deck with our joists. And since then, we have been able to get the rest of the joists up and installed. And we have the outside of the deck borders chosen. Like I chose the outside of the deck where I wanted to be. Sometimes I wait to do that and sometimes I do it and ahead of schedule or ahead of time usually what we would do is we'd start decking at the house and we'd run it out for about 10 feet this is a 12 foot deck and then i would measure and cut my end so i don't end up with a little wedge or a piece of decking on the outside of the deck but because of varying circumstances and we're putting a waterproof bladder on both sections of this deck i chose to finish it and we're going to start our decking from the outside of the deck and work our way in Okay, that's done. We have the curve figured out for the upper deck because there's this deck has two levels. So there's an upper deck and a lower deck. It, even though it's one step uh, divides them, it's just what I'm calling them so we can be a little more accurate on our description. And on the upper deck, all the outside uh, joists have been cut past the beam in a curve. It's a 66 foot radius. And I figured that out on my computer. And then what I did was I made a template, a 66 foot radius template. I made three pieces, three pieces of out of plywood. And then I stacked those together and put the third one in the middle. And then I moved this in and out. I knew where my ends were gonna be on that 66 foot radius. And I knew where the center was gonna be. So then I was able to take those three pieces, average them out to create the curve. And then we bent some decking on that curve and then i used the deck boards and i did the same thing on the frame i i pinned or i clamped both edges of the curve boards down to the joists and then i brought the middle because if you took it in too far then the boards go like this 
If it took them too far out, then they would go like this. So I put it about where I thought it would be from my computer and then I, I moved it in just a little bit more to make those two boards cross over at the right point. And then we marked all those lines. And then I took a skill saw brand, it's called a Sasquatch. It's a chainsaw hooked to one of their skill saws and I cut them that way. And it was a really nice clean cut and a nice clean look. And then when we we're done with that, I took some PVC decking. I use it as my outside curved rim joist. We do that quite often. And you would be surprised at how stable that becomes when you start fastening all that stuff together. And then I went on a little trip to Boca Raton, Florida for the last few days. So Nazi's been here running all, some, all the blocking, all of our rail blocking, a lot of our pressure blocking and our mid-span pressure blocking, which he's still working on right now. I'm working on some of the flat border blocking that we need for our surface borders and for our field borders to come together and have a surface border down the middle. So uh, that's all I got for you for now. So just uh, check us out and see how we do for the rest of the day. pressure blocking done on this deck and now we're trying to create some areas where there's two spots on this deck where the decking need to meet over an area because the deck's too wide to just install the decking and we're not doing random patterns it's better when you do a pvc deck if you actually have intentional breaks in the deck so things can move back and forth expand and contract because pvc moves in the heat and the cold what we're doing is we're going to do a double uh race racing stripe kind of concept because this deck's so fast you know what i'm saying like it zooms so we are doubling up on our surface border that's going to coincide with all the decking going this way and then these two boards are going to go this way right and so what we did was we decided okay if we're going to do that how do we do it there's two ways to do it but because we're doing a waterproof bladder there's really only one way to do it correctly we're actually filling an entire joist bay with solid blocking so that not only can these boards have a place to go and these boards can have a place to go but then the water has a place to go off of all that and into the joist bays that have the waterproof bladder installed. So that's what we're gonna be working on now and uh, I'm not sure what else we'll get done today, but that's the next step. We made these parts and Nazi was just killing it, getting this thing installed and I'm looking up and he's going through a double joist plus two and seven eighths inches of material and then into a two by 12. My concept was for the material to have enough fastener in it so it made sense so it was stable. But because it's a double joist, we actually need to add a longer fastener because it added an inch and a half to the, uh, the equation, which I wasn't, I didn't capture that until just now I looked up. So he's almost completely done installing this uh, flat blocking, but now he's got to go back and pull all the screws out and put in longer ones because I blew it. So those kind of things happen. And that's uh, what's always nice about being on site is you can be aware of something that maybe somebody else didn't catch. Cause I told him to put in that length. And then when we double checked it and he goes, well, they're actually compressing really nice. And I'm like, okay, but we really need to get this fastener to a certain depth in the side of this board, or we're gonna have to add more blocking and you know make a bigger mess out of things underneath. So uh, to keep it clean and to keep it safe and to keep it stable and to keep it going, we're gonna pull out the six inch leg and put in a, a eight inch leg. Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching our videos. So we were here yesterday for about an hour and it was so windy and rainy that we decided it wasn't safe to continue working. So now what a difference a day can make and it's beautiful out. 
So today we're working on a waterproof bladder for our current deck project. We have a little bit late already and we're just gonna continue doing this all day long. All right guys, so um, basically we're just laying down joist bays. We're putting the main bladder system in right now. Everything's been cut, we've cut it all down the length and now we're starting to install all the pieces and the parts that we cut out last week to make this deck so it's waterproof. So we're just gonna keep doing that and uh, enjoy the ride. All right, so we've pretty much run out of uh, length of our scaffolding. So we gotta take it all down and reset it to do the next section. It's going so much quicker because we're using the scaffolding, but we have to take it down and reset it every time we run out, but we're able to do 20 feet of bladder at a time. So we basically just completed 40 feet in four hours, 40 by 15 or 40 by 13. So. Uh, that's, that's four, that's 520 square feet? What's 40 times three? Hold on, hold on, let's see. 520 square feet, hmm? Hmm? <laughs> All right, so um, what we're doing now is we're just trying to, because we have a kind of a funky thing with this chimney going on, we're going to make some adjustments and see if we can get these uh, scaffoldings back up safely and then we'll continue running more bladder. So we have the upper deck main bladders are done. All we have to do now are the returns and the flat blocking, but we're gonna continue doing the lower deck, kind of the same thing we just did. It'll be a little bit easier because I don't have to cut everything on an angle. I can just cut them straight and install them. So uh, we'll get these, these done and we'll see where we're at by the end of the day. I'm not sure if we're gonna get any returns done or not today, but we'll see. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about uh, waterproof bladders and how we're gonna keep this deck dry. Uh, one of the big benefits is that all the framing gets covered so there's no moisture that'll ever see the light of day on this on this lumber. So this frame's gonna last a very long time. Any moisture that it might see is very minimal compared to what it would normally receive if there was not a bladder on this deck. Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we're laying down some decking, doing a little bit of framing. We're kind of all over the place today. Uh, I think today's video is going to be more about laying down decking and just showing you how we do that and some of the things we do, some of the trade secrets that we might do that maybe you don't see every day and how do you attach a deck and not cut through the bladder when you're cutting end grains, things like that. All right, so since the last time uh, we filmed, we've been able to get some decking down. You can kind of see behind me, we got basically the lower deck, uh, the lower deck's been installed up to a certain point and now we've had to frame out a landing so that we can finish up the framing for that section so we can finish laying the deck boards over there. So it goes from a 12 foot, it goes 20 foot section, then there's a break, then there's a 12 foot section, and then that 12 foot section bounces out to a landing, which we're building right now. They're framing that up right now. And so we got all that decking laid. And then yesterday we got a lot of this deck laid as well, which is a 12 by 40 and it was kind of nasty weather but we just kind of stuck it out and made it happen so we just have the outside edges of this deck to get installed 
Uh, it's more of the challenging part because it's a curve. So everything has to be done kind of special. We'll be working on that. We have a couple ends to pin down over here, things like that. So just kind of a little bit of buttoning up what we didn't finish yesterday and then continuing on uh, with getting the rest of these two areas laid down and secured. And then uh, we'll be able to cut those in. And once that's done, then we'll be able to start putting in our borders. So uh, stay tuned and see how we do today. trying to lower this sprinkler line so it's down in the ground and not at the level where we need to put our gravel that's at the bottom of our stair landing here. Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we're gonna do an update on our most current deck project. So thank you for coming to our channel. I really appreciate it. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. So we are underneath the deck right now. Yes, and it's completely dry because our waterproof bladder is doing its job. We're still waiting on gutters. Those are gonna be installed tomorrow, but uh, What's re it's really nice to be able to come underneath a space and have this dry area that you can walk through and not get soaking wet. So now that the bladder is done, all the decking is installed, all the screws are in, everything's cortex and plugged, now it's on to trim. So we have a couple things we're doing for the trim because the client has decided to soffit the underside of the deck. So we have to create a special trim package around the perimeter of the deck so that we can have a way to keep the water from intruding and getting the softening wet and also so it looks nice. So that's our next step today. We're just working on trim. I'm gonna do some folded corners. The guys are hanging the first layer. We're gonna do a triple step. Because of our softening, we're doing a triple step uh, fascia which is kind of cool because usually we do a double step but on this particular job we're doing a triple so uh, stay tuned for that we'll see if I don't know if we're gonna get any of that up today we have quite a bit of work to do just to get the first layer done so follow along and see how we do and then let's go upstairs and do a review on where we are as far as the decking is concerned all right so I think the last time we were here 
this upper deck wasn't quite laid. We had a certain amount of it done, but then all the tricky stuff had to be finished. So now you can see we finished installing all of our decking all the way out through the end of the curve. Everything's been cut, sanded, filed, beveled, face screwed, and cortexed. And then we were able to install our perimeter borders, which are in a different color called dark hickory. The field decking on this deck is TimberTech Azac Coastline. And then we did coastline surface borders through the middle. This is like a, a pattern break where we can, the deck is 40 feet wide. So you have to have a place to break all the boards, right? So what I decided to do was a double border in between the two sections of the deck. And we decided to do that in the same color. So we have all the same color all the way up against the house through the middle of the deck. And then we did a dark hickory border around the outside perimeter of the deck to kind of highlight the edges. And that's where all of our railing gets installed. And then we're doing a dark hickory trim set, which the guys are working on right now. So this all got done. It's all set in place. This is basically finished. We've checked it for leaks, no leaks, which I'm very happy about. And now we're just getting to the point where I'm starting to work on some corners. I'm going to do some folded corners on this project so that when we put in our certain pieces of fascia, they just have something to butt into, which is kind of nice. We did that a few months ago on a project. You probably remember that. So this is all done. And then down here, we are able to get this deck completely installed. Same uh, border set in the middle as well and the same uh, exterior dark hickory border. And then over here, we were able to finish up our landing. We got all the framing in for that. The posts are installed and it's ready to go and ready for a staircase, which I might start laying out today. That might be tomorrow, I'm not sure yet. So all the decking's laid and installed. The deck is ready for rail, but before we install the railing, we have to finish the trim set, which is all the fascia boards. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. And now I can go down and explain to you kind of what the process is on that. All right, so what you see here is the outside. Oh, <laughs> wet, it's wet today. Okay, it the right. outside of our top edge of our board. Now we always cap that off with fascia. So that's our first layer of fascia, okay? From there, we're gonna put another piece like this. And this is actually gonna be a piece of thinner fascia, so it's gonna have a step look, kind of like that. And then the third step will be here. Now you can see right now, the water is collecting onto this piece, which means it's gonna go through and get our fascia wet, but we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another piece of G-tape, maybe on a little bit drier day, about a half inch down onto here, so the water, any water that gets trapped behind here, will have to work its way down and out. And that's part of the reason why we're putting this piece in, is so it doesn't affect the moisture, doesn't affect the inside of our wood softening, because we're doing a one by six tongue and groove pine for the inside of our deck, and we don't want that wet. And we've had that issue in the past, and so we're putting, I'd call this like a something of a protector as long as we can get this line clean and get the tape on here, then that's how we're gonna keep the water from protruding into here and getting our, our softening wet. I also have a couple more safeguards we're gonna use in case some moisture does happen to get through there, but that's our first layer of defense. And then this all is trimmed out, so it's a triple stack. So we have our outside layer, our middle layer, and then our bottom layer, which is what the guys are working on right now. So they're gonna put this all the way around the perimeter of the deck. All right, so over here we have this landing and we're gonna have a set of stairs coming off of it. And we've already have the, the poster installed for the landing for the support. We added a, a block over here so that we can hang our staircase from it. And I need to add a support piece in that's gonna span between here and here. These are baffles. This little landing, we also waterproofed it so that we it would be the same thickness as the rest of the deck so that when the boards came across, it didn't go like this, you know, and, and get all wonky. So we have a similar thickness. So we didn't tell the gutter company we needed an additional gutter, but we're gonna have them drop a small gutter under here and then run a, one more downspout right down the back side of this post for just water management. But what I gotta do right now is I'm just gonna add a piece of two by six or whatever this measures out to. Yeah, five and a half. 
I'll add a piece of two by six for this width and then that'll allow me to hang my staircase from it because my staircase is going to be seven and a half the back side of my mounting plate is seven and a half so i'm going to fill in this five and a half and i'm going to take two inches of the existing two by ten frame as well and mount to that so it's kind of like double it's like double protection or double strength or whatever you want to call it it's just adding additional layers of the mounting ability for the staircase so i know it has plenty of support so that's what's next. That's what I'm kind of getting ready for because I got to start thinking about that. I start figuring out how many stairs we need. We're actually going to have a staircase to a landing and then it's going to take a, a 90 degree turn to the left and then finish down on the patio. So I've kind of already prefigured that I need nine steps to get to the end of the deck where our landing will start. And then it's a four foot by five foot landing because I like to land one foot of my staircase right on the landing and then we'll turn 90 degrees and then we'll go down to the patio. So that's what I'm up to and I'm gonna start figuring that out while the guys are running that under trim on the deck. Uh, I'm taking our Cortex plugs that are grain matched to match our deck boards and I'm smoothing it out because the trim that we're doing, we're going into the side of the deck board, which has got a smooth finish on it. So I'm just taking this grain stuff here, hitting it with the sander. And if there's any left over, I'll take my razor blade, give it a little scrape to flatten it out. And now, the grain is gone. It's smooth. So it'll hide the smooth side of our Cortex plugs. Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Welcome back. DJ Studio Man, we missed you so much and I think our audience did as well, right? Click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. This build is finished. We just finished doing the last couple things today. We had a couple weather delays while we were here and we had a little bit of time off for the holidays so that's why this project seemed like it took a little bit longer but we're actually here just a little over nine weeks, maybe 10 weeks total for a deck of this proportion of this size with this much detail that's not a bad amount of time i was actually pro projecting at least 12 weeks so we are a couple weeks ahead of schedule from what i projected which is great so i thought we could go over all of uh, the features of this deck starting with the foundation and going all the way up some of it's concealed now because we have some softening underneath the deck because the deck's been waterproof but we'll get into that in a little bit and I'll still describe the framework for you. All right guys, so the first thing when we ever we build a deck is the footing detail. So this deck was in a little bit different jurisdiction than some of the other ones we built. We did not use helical piles on this deck. We actually hand dug, poured concrete, put a rebar inside the holes to create our footing depth. The size of the hole is a 12 by 12, but the actual footprint underneath the concrete is 16 by 16. So we're 16 inches by 16 inches by about 24 inches deep. We don't have a deep frost depth where we live in the Pacific Northwest. Our frost depth is usually only about 12 inches. So we don't have to do some of those crazy four foot deep footings like some of the guys do in the east and the northeast and you guys up in Canada. 
But uh, don't blame me for that. We deal with a lot of rain that you guys don't have to, so there's a trade-off there. What we did is we poured the footings, and then we installed some Simpson, uh, I think they're called CBSQ66 or something like that, where they're a heavy-duty 6x6 bracket. And again, I know depending on where you live and your geography may determine the type of lumber that you have or have ability for or that's available to you. So for us, we use a lot of, so I call it solid sawn timber, which means it's a solid chunk. It's not laminated, unless we're using glue lambs or pressure treated glue lambs, those are available as well. But most of the time I'm using a solid sawn lumber. This deck we put six by six posts in, and then we have six by 12 beams above us. And those are spanning no more than 12 feet. So in Washington state, they changed the law that we have to build to a 60 pound per square foot live load. So some guys, uh, I get the comment once in a while, oh man, you're overbuilding this, you're an overbuilder, why are you wasting so much lumber? I could build three decks for the amount of lumber you use in your deck. Well, hey man, it's the law. So I wouldn't have been able to get the permit if I would have built it to your spec because I'm building to a higher standard, which is not my fault. It's the state of Washington's fault for amending that law. A lot of guys in Colorado and in snowy environments, they build to 100 pound per square foot live load anyways. I'd say this is like 80, maybe. Um, but the minimum is 60 pounds per square foot where I live. If you don't know what that means, Google it, uh, do some research. You can ask me questions, but I'm not going to be able to answer everybody's questions. We're getting so many to it's to the point where I just can't fuel them all. So I apologize for that. I'll do my best. But uh, between all the social media avenues that we have, it is a lot of uh, information that I'm trying to process. Plus, still run a business and plus still generate an income. All right. So we have the posts. We have the beams. Then the joists, which you cannot see anymore. These are 2 by 10 joists. Okay. So they're uh, 14 inches on center. Why 14 inches, you ask? Well, 16 inches on center is great. Sometimes with AZEC PVC, 16 inches may feel a little, little light on the foot, a little possible sponge. So we like to bring our joists in a couple inches. I don't like to bring them into 12 unless it's mandated on the plan because then our nail guns don't really fit inside that 12 inch joist space. So 14 inches, we can still get a, a short headed uh, nail gun a cordless or sometimes we use a pneumatic uh, there's a dewalt one that we use quite a bit that's a pneumatic that fits right in between a 14 inch bay just perfect and we can blam in our uh, all our blocking and any toenailing that we have to do all right so the deck's been attached to the house we've done several videos on that about how we attach to the house this was a kind of a unique one because we had some brick veneer brackets that we have to install we did a video on those on our instagram page so go over to our instagram page and uh don't forget to uh, like our page as well and follow us there. And you can check out some of the videos we've done. Those are not as professionally edited or polished like the ones we do here. Uh, that's more of me just holding my iPhone out and showing you guys what's going on on a daily basis, okay? So all the joists are installed. All right, let's go over the staircase. We'll talk about that a little bit and then we'll go upstairs and check out the deck. All right, guys, here's the staircase that we built to go along with the deck. So everything has been framed in pressure treated lumber, uh, the jacks or the stringers. I call them jacks, everybody else calls them stringers. The framing of the staircase, we'll call it, is made out of a two by 12, cut into specific runs. Now, because we're using Regal Ideas glass, a crystal rail railing, it, it comes on a 35 degree angle, okay? So you gotta build these stairs to a 35 degree angle if you want everything to line up properly in between your gaps, which to me is really important. So that's what we did. We built our staircase to a 35 degree angle. We have a really nice landing right here. This is all done in TimberTech Azac, and the colors are Coastline and Dark Hickory. And we used some of their multi-width boards on the faces, and then we installed one um, in-light light and each rise, and those are the Hive 22 uh, limited edition Dr. Dex dark lights. So they come in a Hive and a Fusion. If you guys are interested, check out InLight. We'll tag them in the description below, okay? All right, let's go upstairs and check out the rest of this deck. What I want you to notice, though, is the glass on the staircase and how it flows 
from the landing, from the stairs, and then take a look at how equal the gaps are in between the glass as we go up the stairs. So Regal Ideas, uh, they sell the crystal rail. It comes with the pods and the glass as one complete unit. You can get different widths. Uh, it changes from, it goes from 24 inches and then it goes up every six inches after that. So 24 and then 30 and then 36 and then 42 on up to five feet wide. F uh, 60 inches is the widest piece of glass, except for when you're using a piece of crystal rail glass for a five, five step set then that's probably the biggest piece that they actually have. It's a little bit bigger. Those are very heavy and you usually need two guys or unless you're a big burly dude and you like carrying a lot of heavy weight, great. But we usually use two people to carry the glass. There was quite a bit on this particular project. We ended up having to use two transformers to power all the glass. Another nice feature is their ADA compliant grabbable handrail. Uh, by code you have to have one of these and it has to be 36 or 34 to 38 inches above the tread nosing. So this is a nice flow. I didn't even realize they made these components so I could actually make this continuous until I started messing around with some of their parts. So they do make a 90 and a 35 degree bevel that comes together that you can twist this together and make it into a really cool flow okay so uh but that's the code you have to have a grabbable handrail they didn't make us do the returns and all that stuff uh, our inspector was pretty cool about that because you know my first interpretation when i build something is that it's art and then it becomes function and then it becomes a deck okay so that's that. Some of the trim details that we did on this deck that you see here, we did folded corners. We don't do it on every deck, but on our high-end decks, we do a folded corner. We made some folded fascia and trim board pieces as well. And then we tucked our second piece of fascia under that. And then we actually have a third reveal piece. The reason for this third reveal piece is to keep the softening on the inside of the deck dry the the water some of the moisture can travel behind these boards right but i didn't want it to get to the fascia boards so we installed a third piece right here that we g tape so the water has to exit right here you can kind of see a drip right here and along the way there's a few drips every here and there okay because it's the way i trim my decks i do it a little bit differently than most i don't run my fascia below my deck boards I like to cap all my uh, decking off with my fascia. It's just the way I do it. Uh, it's the way I like it. It's my decision. It's my deck. That's what I'm going to do. But if you don't take the precautions, that's why we tape all the outsides of all of our uh, ledger framing, all of our outside rim joists, all our doubles outside. Anything that has to do with when it's touching moisture and something sitting flat against it, if we don't protect it, it's going to rot. So that's that. So that's our fascia detail on this deck, which I think turned out really nice. Okay, let's go up here. This is what I was talking about earlier was the reveal, like having the same distance of, away from the glass here as you do at the bottom of the stair is a really nice feature. It's really hard to do that if you're not on a 35 degree angle. So anybody that's considering doing staircase glass on their Regal Ideas crystal rail, it's very important that you remember that. All right, and sometimes when you're building these decks and you're doing all this elaborate work, you have to be creative. Uh, you have to be an artist. And so this was my interpretation of how to keep this to code and pass the code. This was over a four inch gap right here. So we had to come up with a way so a child couldn't go in between these two pieces of glass and then jump off the deck and kill themselves. So we actually used some of the Regal Ideas uh, glass brackets and we had a custom piece of low iron glass made this one piece of glass was over $120 to have custom made so if you think about having starfire or custom glass made for your regal ideas like if you're doing curved glass it gets very expensive very quickly because you still have to buy all the components for the rail this is just this one piece I needed and um, it has a little bit different of an eased edge than the rest of the glass, but it's still a really nice complimentary look and kind of goes with the whole theme of the deck. All right, let's talk about the deck. All right, the deck itself, just like I said earlier, it's a TimberTech Azek. The field color is coastline. The border color is dark hickory. Uh, the whole deck has been waterproofed with an EPDM waterproof bladder which we'll be putting out a master class on soon so stay tuned for that uh, for a nominal fee you can learn exactly how we do to keep our decks dry and so you can be able to 
uh, have dry space underneath your project. Where I live, it rains so much, it really makes sense for us to dry in a space. Sometimes we do the whole deck, sometimes we do a partial. Just depends on what's below it and what the client wants. If they just want some dry entertaining space for those uh, summer nights where, where it may rain, there you go, it's good to go. This whole deck, we did the whole thing, a thousand square feet. So the crystal, and they decided they wanted crystal rail everywhere, upstairs, down the stairs, on the landing, everything. So that's what we accommodated our clients with. We have double surface borders in the middle, uh, just as a break because of the way we frame the deck and because of how we had to deal with some of the other challenges as far as keeping a deck waterproof while we're still trying to do double surface borders. We chose a double instead of a single. The house changes levels and the old deck changed levels, so we went with that theme again and we kept the deck at a stagger. So half the deck is, um, it's about 10 and a half inches lower and that also reflects inside the house. So we basically step down in the same spot as they do in the house. So it's just basically deck, a five and a quarter inch step, and then a five and a quarter inch drop to the lower deck. And probably my favorite part of this deck is the curved section over here, which you guys can see. Now on this one, we segmented the glass. So the glass is actually straight. We didn't go for curved glass. Sometimes we do, on usually on tighter radiuses, it looks better if we curve the glass, but it's a huge expense. So we were able to keep our price uh, competitive by using straight panels and putting it on a slider curve and actually doing some heat bending on our uh, surface borders to create that curve and then being able to install all of the glass on the surface border that's curved kind of gives it the illusion of a curved deck so i thought that turned out really nice guys really thank you so much for following thank you for your comments uh i know that some of you have sent messages saying hey man when are you going to be back in action uh we are so thank you so much for following. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. Don't forget to drop us a comment below and please like our videos whenever you watch them. And if you do, hit that like button. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.